Yo Geeks, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so I know this video took a little longer than expected, but it's finally here. After Halloween, I don't know what the heck happened to me, but I finally got my stuff together, so I have a new video ready for you to enjoy today. I've been watching a lot of Sailor Moon now, and I'm really excited with the announcement of the upcoming movie about the final arc and stuff, so I decided to make some kind of Sailor Magic or Girl Fantasy, but I didn't want to be like, you know, like the Sailor Moon reference to be so strong, so I decided to blend it a little bit with the Star Guardians universe from League of Legends, which you all know I also love. Which is kind of ironic because the Star Guardians universe is based mostly on the Sailor Moon universe. So yeah, I decided to make my own blend. Also, I finally have a new outfit, dude! I was a freaking NPC, I feel more like a main character now. So that said, enough talking and let's move on right to the video! Okay, some time ago, I got this bunch of random heads from AliExpress, they might seem ugly at first sight, but when I look at them, you know, the face structure, I realized that this probably was a paint job problem. These faces are truly beautiful and I saw the potential on them and I've been waiting to repaint one for a while, so this was the time. Okay, so first things first. I had to make an aperture on the top of her head to gain access to the eye sockets because I'll be removing them so we can replace those creepy eyes with prettier ones. I had to be really careful cause I'm using an X-Acto knife. And you know, one wrong slice and you can ruin your finger. Or what's worse, you can ruin your doll's face forever. Once done, it should look like this. Oh gosh. This doll's paint job is so hideous and creepy. Let's wipe this off. I'm using 100% pure acetone to do this. So let's grab a cotton ball and let's aggressively remove that horror face. One thing that really bothers me is that all these AliExpress dolls, um, they all have the same problem, the makeup permanently stains the vinyl. But well, that's something I'll be fixing up right after. Clean face now and she needs a body donor, I'll be using Audrey from Disney Descendants body. The proportion fit this head so beautifully. Ok, so it's time for color matching now. Some people have been asking me which acrylics I use for changing those skin color and the truth is, I use my regular cheap acrylic paints. Yep, I don't use fancy airbrush paints. I know, my airbrush gets clogged sometimes, I have to clean it, but that is something I can totally deal with since basically I only use the airbrush to recolor doll heads. I really wanted to show this part in real time because it is so magical and you can see how easy it is. And here she is, oh my gosh, she looks so good. These proportions are so pretty. She looks so much like a red scene BJD. I wish there were dolls so pretty like this on the stores, but well. Okay, let's protect her body, because you know what's coming up. Time for the face up, but first I wanted to show the eyes I'll be using on her. These are 10mm eyes and I got them on AliExpress as well. They were really really cheap, I think they were like 3 bucks or something. I love how insanely and intensely blue they are. Hey 
As usual, I sealed the doll face with Mr. Super Clear, aka MSC. I'll be using my Faber Castell watercolor pencils and Munga Soft Pastels for this face up. I like to make all the line work first and the blushing later. I realize this way is easier to fix errors, because if I make a mistake, it's easy to erase just the lines and then redraw where there is no blush yet. But if I apply the blushing in early stages and I want to fix something later, then I will have to de-blush, which basically will end in having to start over. So yeah, this is the way I'm doing my face ups now. I'm trying to give the illusion that her mouth is a little bit bigger because it's so tiny. <laughs> Okay, so I feel confident at this point to start using the blacks. Also, I will start blushing the lips. I always prefer the lips in this diffuse style, more natural than the classic lipstick style factory dolls come with. I will proceed then with the rest of the blushing process. This will soften the hard lines a little bit. I will frame her face as well. Okay, so it's time for the lashes, and at this point you notice that I'm going for this graphic anime face-up that I love so much. I also think it's really charming how it fits this face. Yes, white eyebrows, cause, spoiler alert, she will be having white hair. A little hint of color on her makeup because blue will be her main color as well. At this point I will be going back and forth with the final touches because I really don't want this face up to be too over the top. And here I am, highlighting the eyelashes. I think this is a signature step for me at this point. I just can't help it. I want to add some sparkles to her face, so I'm using Pearl X powder. Don't worry, I know it looks extreme right now, but Mr. Super Clear will make it less noticeable. I know I barely apply gloss to my dolls, but I think this one really deserves that treatment. I'm going to apply it on the eyelids, on the water lines, And of course, on her lips. And voila, the face up is done. Let's put on the eyes using sticky tag. At this point, the face up is really well sealed, so don't worry about me handling the head like this. Oh my gosh, she looks so pretty. I knew this head had the potential. I'm in love.
Okay, so it's time to give her an outfit and because of my inspiration, it's gonna be very very magical girl. But with some twists like the Star Guardians. I made the patterns on the go and I didn't make any concept art for this, I just wanted to really let it flow. I decided to paint all the borders in golden paint just because it makes the outfit more interesting, it's cool and also it protects the fabric from fraying without having to sew a hem, so it's a win-win situation. I want her skirt to have two layers so I repeated the same pattern in two different fabrics. Since I want the two layers to be really noticeable, I left the dark blue layer a little bit longer than the top one. I already resolved all the technical issues I have on my sewing machine, but I don't know why I've been relying so much on hand sewing lately. I think that's my comfort zone when it comes to doll clothing making. I feel way more in control and I can decide where I can put every single stitch. Not that I won't be using the sewing machine ever again, I just wanted to feel comfortable while making this project. And for me, that means sewing by hand. Also, leaving the modesty aside, I'm really proud of my hand stitches. I've really perfected them through the years. Okay, so the skirt is done. Off camera I also made the top, which I really really love with all those pointy designs. It kinda reminds me like a flower petals or for some reason. Okay, but let's move on onto her boots. I will be using Hextian's technique, but with a little bit of a twist from myself. I folded the fabric in half and I'll be sewing it like if I was going to make doll stockings, but I will only make the seam till this point. Once done I will cut the excess of fabric as close as I can to the seam I just made. Now let's flip it over. And then let's put it on the doll. Once done you'll get something like this with all this piece of flapping fabric. I'm gonna put a heel on and then using super glue I will cover the heel with the fabric. I will add super glue only to the very edge of the heel because that will be more than enough and we don't want to stain the fabric. Also you have to be really really careful when stretching the fabric because once it touches the super glue it's an instant bond, you can't undo it without ruining everything and then you have to start over. So just be fast and act with confidence. I swear I was super afraid to try this technique but it was so fun, I will do it again in the future for sure. Then I will proceed to get rid of the flapping excess of fabric. And once done you get yourself a pair of completely removable boots, but why stop here? You know I like to complicate things. So I wasn't convinced with the transition where the fabric is glued to the plastic, so I decided to sculpt new soles and heels using good old epoxy sculpt. This will seal the deal, and it will make it look like factory made. I had to be super careful cause I really didn't want to mess the fabric.
Once cured overnight, I will paint it using gold acrylic to match the theme. Off camera, I made some more details for the chest ornament and also I made what it will be kind of like her sailor collar. And here's the outfit till this point. And I'm really digging it. It looks so clean and I love the proportions. So it's time to add more details to bring all that magical girl fantasy to life. I 3D printed random ornaments I found on Thingiverse. They belong to Star Guardians and the Genshin Impact characters. So since they perfectly match this aesthetic, I will be reusing them where they fit the most. I had no previous plan for this. I just glue them where I thought they looked better. And here's the outfit completely done. I have to say, I'm really proud of how I have evolved with my doll clothes making designs and techniques. So this girl's still bad, so let's give her a beautiful her due. I already made the wig cap and I will be using again my technique when I mix both acrylic yarn weft and long nylon hair. And by beautiful hairdo, I meant that I want her hair to really look like Usagi's hair, with the long floor length bomb pigtails. I also wanted to try something that I see other doll artists do, which is through directly glue the yarn to the wig cap without making the weft first. I never tried this before, and if I make it work, it will save a really tedious step. Only downside is that I have to wait forever for the white glue to dry. Okay, so I made half of the head and I really like how it looks. So now let's make the other half. Once done, I will get rid of this thin and pathetic pigtail. You'll see why a little bit later. But before, let's style the bangs. So, once cut and styled, I will use the long nylon weft to make the pigtails. Yes, they will be glued onto the wig. But before I combine them with the buns. So now it's time to glue them and I'll be using E6000 because it's the strongest glue I have. This part was really satisfying because I get to see all that Sailor Moon fantasy come into life for the first time. As a final touch, I will be adding some golden 3D printed ornaments to the hairdo. You know, to keep the Star Guardians vibe. And here's the wig all done and oh my gosh, it looks so good, like I'm living how long these pigtails are. It also kind of reminds me of Ning Huan from Genshin Impact for some reason. I just love it. I designed and made her a wen because duh, how is she gonna fight against the forces of evil?
And last, but no least, I decided to curl a little bit the bottom of the pigtails. And now she is done! Okay guys, this project was a whole experience for myself. Sometimes we as artists get our creativity blocked. It is not a funny experience, but what matters is how we overcome this obstacle. That said, I hope it won't happen to me ever again or at least in a long time. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for your support. I always leave for your comments. They make me happy, so I'll be here creating more content. If you're new here, hey, subscribe, I won't let you down. So that's all for today, we'll meet again in my next video, bye!